Uh, Do you think Universal will cut the um, uh, 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 we can't have you bringing germs into the lab for Minion Mayhem? (laughs) Hello and welcome to the Park Stop Podcast, episode 22, right? I my name is Ali. <laughs> my name is Alicia Stella. With me, as always, is my co-host Ian. Hey, kids! Today we are revisiting Epic Universe. I don't think we've done a full episode on Epic Universe since the August first announcement last year. Sure, if you say so. But first, seriously, I like <laughs> the Gru's like uh, uh, we need to do a routine body <laughs> scan. Yeah, can't that's have probably... bringing any human germs into the lab. <laughs> That is an atrocious impersonation. <laughs> this is all I got. It's nothing serious, just some high density lasers. <laughs> I mean, it's already like a horrible, like Russian <laughs> accent as it is. Oh, we have a problem. Looks like some of you have not showered in like a week. <laughs> Gross. I'm not naming names, but it's those guys. <laughs> I wonder yeah, how so, long Steve Carell walked around talking like that to make sure he could <laughs> talk like that all the time to do a character. Yeah. Better shower when you get back to the hotel. <laughs> Don't go right to the pool. You're starting to sound like Schwarzenegger now. <laughs> get to the p- chopper. All right. So <laughs> when the parks reopen, whoever goes there first, please report back to me. Did they cut that out? Oh, <sighs> we need new stuff. On to the news. Arc. <laughs> Epic Universe. Headline. Delayed. Never heard of it. They're building something? Oh, sort of. They're, they're slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the news, the big news uh, a few days ago, during an earnings call, the Comcast CEO admitted that construction for Epic Universe is delayed. Yeah. And wait, did they ever announce the actual year formally? Not formally, but they've yeah, announced so. it twice in Comcast earnings calls to investors. Yeah, that's what um, I thought. And even back in March, they're like, we're still on target. And it's like, uh, <laughs> that Are was, you really? It's, just a, it's not that long ago. But, you know, they um, a spokesman for Universal said that the delay will give contractors, vendors and Universal creative partners more flexibility to work together within a changing environment. This is about timing only. Our confidence in our business, our communities, and our industry is as strong as ever. We will share more specifics as we move forward. So that's the only official word we got on it. It's It sounds to me like supplies are slowed. Um, I would assume fabrication fabrication houses have been closed for the last couple of months. And these are things that are going to, like, no matter how much Comcast wants to keep construction going, if there's no supplies coming in, there, there's nothing they can do about that. Yeah, I agree. And mail, if anybody been trying to get mail from anywhere, everybody knows it's kind of weird. I've had stuff delayed almost every time I've ordered something. Oh, so, I have an inter- international package that's taken two months to get. So, yeah. Yeah, everything's delayed. Imagine if your international package is coaster track. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's fine. It's no big deal. Like, they're still moving dirt around. They're still, um, yeah, that's another thing. Mayor, Orange County Mayor uh, Demings said that a universal official told him the day before this that the overall project would be delayed for a year. Um, That doesn't necessarily mean the park is delayed a year, just the overall like Southern project is delayed a year, but it probably means the park has been put off till the next year. Yeah. So we're looking at 2024 instead of 2023. But if you listen to our podcast, we've already been kind of guessing 2024 was going to be when it actually opened because a target date is not necessarily always met. Yeah, I, I don't listen to our podcast. Um, you don't? <laughs> <no>. <laughs> I, I don't like my own voice. Um, yeah, so I mean, it kind of, I, I think even if this wasn't going on, it still would have been 2024 like we were already talking about. Well, there is a conspiracy theory out there. Oh, boy. That they knew it was already going to be delayed a little bit later than they had been saying. And they're using this as an excuse, or at least, you know, partially blaming it on the, you know, with the situation going on. And and deep down, they're like, oh, finally, we have a cover story and we no one can blame us for it. Yeah, because Universal is doing, known for doing construction super slowly. Well, yeah. Well, okay. Maybe... Maybe they take their time and not like rush the electrical for this park. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, I mean, it would make the Frankenstein stuff a little more realistic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, look at the, the the Tesla coil is amazing. The lightning is just shooting back and forth. And they're like, oh no, that's just exposed wiring. We need to get someone in here to fix that. No, so I like that. Beijing is still uh, on on target for 2021. Uh, they said in the earnings call and. Um, like uh, 15,000 workers went back to work and they're doing temperature oh. checks and everything. And I, they went back to work, I think a few weeks ago. This is just, they're just announcing it on the, the earnings call to let people know the, the investors. Uh, Super Nintendo World in Japan has been ex- uh, delayed or is expected to be delayed by a few months is what they said. But, you know, it's still hard to, to know exactly mm. how long that might be delayed. But no, it's good to see Beijing was already so far along in construction that yeah. I'm sure they want to do whatever they can to get that done. I'm glad that um, it's still going forward. I just don't. So the temperature check thing, I know it's a precaution, but it's not a very accurate way to check this stuff out. But I guess they have to do something. I don't I mean, there's something. Why. It's just one line of defense. You know, if it's the one symptom that you're showing that they can actually test for. So um, a team member supposedly here in Orlando and Hollywood, they're going to start, or they might already have already started checking, um, in your car, which is what they're doing in Beijing. They, uh, they put a thermometer up to you as you drive in and they turn you away. I think they raised it. It was 99 point something, but now it's 100.4. I think they turn yeah, you it's away. Gotta be, yeah. Well, it's gotta be higher because there are people that have like autoimmune and other issues that'll run right. the temperature for no reason. So 99 is a little low. <laughs> yeah. My normal temperature runs low. So it's like everyone's different yep but yeah so that's that's kind of the news on the delay um you know if you want to go full conspiracy theory the and we'll talk about it later but maybe the delay is so they can change one of the lands maybe Maybe. like to make it lord of the rings shut up (laughs) put a dollar in the jar put a dollar in the jar (laughs) oh yeah we're definitely doing that you hear that kids every time you bring up lord of the rings you got to put a dollar in the patreon jar now Oh, the Patreon jar? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just put a jar in your house, but yeah, no, that, that works yeah. too. That doesn't um, work for you. It's going back in my pocket. <laughs> it's not a punishment. <laughs> That's how a swear jar works. That's how I save for vacations. So <laughs> <laughs> we um, we are going to talk about, since this is a first time talking about it on the podcast in at length since the August announcement, the, the, the tweet that I have tweeted... <laughs> <laughs> the tweet that I have pinned to my Twitter account uh, since August 1st, uh, which showed the, the different lands of Epic Universe, I've updated it, and now it shows the individual buildings and what they all are, uh, in case anyone was wondering on the current state of the rumors. Hi, Mickey. But, you know, actually, first, in case anyone's joining us for the first time, I've had some people ask questions when they um, they saw a recent article I posted and they're like, how far away is this from the the regular resort and the regular parks and things like that? So I realize we haven't really been recapping. So we should start with the basics. Um, Epic Universe was officially announced August of last year. Uh, it's being built on land near the Orange County Convention Center, which is about two miles south of the current Orlando resort. Um, Kirkman Road is being expanded that will connect Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure and City Walk to this new resort and how Ian, how will um how will Universal be transporting guests back and forth? Flu powder. <laughs> <laughs> uh buses. <laughs> you could choose the fireplace or the toilet. No, yes, the <laughs> dedicated bus lanes down the center of Kirkman uh will make it a brisk, no traffic ride from one resort to the other um or you can drive in a car and be stuck in traffic because i'm sure a lot of locals are going to take advantage of this new path between the two parks as well um oh yeah and it'll have a flat parking lot and not garages at first because it's just the one theme park it's very 1990 of them yay so they have to build it i guess a garage for maybe more stuff someday yeah if they if they added another park or um more another stuff water park. Then, yeah i don't think they're doing that <laughs> <laughs> i think they've had their fill of water parks for now um yeah and then there'll be a road connecting the expanded kirkman all the way to the existing destination parkway which we'll talk about later called universal way 
And that will be the road that the new theme park is on. So, okay, now we got the boring infrastructure stuff out of the way. We can talk about that amazing new site plan that we got this week and then had to give back. <laughs> what site plan? I don't know what you talking about. <laughs> what site? Nothing to see here. Nope. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, so so it was pretty fun to look at while we had it. <laughs> yeah. I made some amazing <laughs> graphics no one can ever see again. <laughs> And just to be clear, it wasn't Universal that asked that we take it down. Yeah. Uh, it was the county. Oh, man. It, apparently, they had issued it publicly without removing some emergency plan information that wasn't supposed to be released. So I, I respected their wishes and took it down when, when they asked. So we were just talking about this before, too. The, the, the plans are actually pretty close to the concept art, which in some parks, we won't name names, I guess. Some, some theme parks, it's not very normal to be that close. I, I mean, yeah, and I think part of it is also that we're not seeing the internal early concept art. We're seeing the concept art after they've already made all their choices, whereas yeah. other resorts that will remain Walt Disney World will set will will show us <laughs> the early concept art before they finalize something because they want us to get excited six years in advance. Um, and Universal <sighs> usually waits till longer, usually. Um, so yeah, the the site plan that we did see that we won't see anymore uh, did look a lot like like ninety five percent exactly the same as the concept art. Oh yeah, like uh, uh, it showed the all the buildings in the hub and all of the um, structures for the four lands and the hotel, and it was nice to see that you know everything for the most part lines up with the with the concept art. It does. It's awesome. So where do you want to start? Um, Well, okay, so we did this back in August. If you listen to it, we mostly went through this concept art and kind of guessed on everything. (laughs) Since then, (laughs) since then, we've got site plans for all of the we've got site plans for three of the lands. And then we got the the overall site plan that showed the whole park, um, which we could zoom into and see the fourth land and the hub. So now we've seen kind of officially what they settled on, like the final plans before they start actual construction, because right now it's still a dirt pit. it's a pretty dirt pit, though. They have the the access roads, the little <laughs> the spider legs. They had they cut those out of the dirt now, so we have the access roads. So you can see like the definition of where each land goes now. That's pretty cool. Still That's dirt. That's pretty though. cool. That's really cool, actually. Um, yes, I'm showing a picture right now. If you're watching the visual version, look this beautiful aerial shot from Bio Reconstruct. Thank you for your beautiful dirt. helicopter shots. Look of at dirt. the dirt. Yes. Well, they they piled it up like 12 feet tall uh, to like raise the park up. <laughs> And yeah, then yeah. they dug out the roads 10 feet down. <laughs> oh, so it's course. like these giant ditches. That's cool, though. Yeah, they were digging through the ditches and burning through. The- Never mind. Oh, geez. So, yeah, I was going to kind of go over the hub because when we originally talked about this, we made a lot of guesses. Mm-hmm. And uh, mostly it would be like you would say, uh, that could that be an attraction? And then I would say that's too short of a building. <laughs> and then uh, we both kind of agreed that that front octagon would be a carousel. Yep. Uh, and you wanted some kind of what do you want in the dome? Mad Max. Thunder yeah, dome. yeah, that's a, yeah, thunder, it's, yeah, a thunder in the dome. That, hey, that's still on the table. <laughs> that's still it's technically yeah. We don't know what's in there. It still <laughs> technically could be thunder dome. Um, it won't be, but it could be. The octagon turns out to be a restaurant, a very fancy full service restaurant. Um, and the space, uh, building that I told you was too short to be anything is, uh, a quick service restaurant. Isn't it like a burger joint? Probably space building space burgers. <laughs> <laughs> and the, um, wait, wait. So, and the octagon ish building is like water themed, right? Like sort of. Well, yeah. That's what I was going to get to is that I think something no one's talking about is that, and you can even see it in the site plan that you can't see you, <laughs> that, <laughs> that each of the like areas of the hub are split. They're split into like different, not, I don't want to say lands, but they've, they're decorated in different ways, like different elements. Like yeah. the front area is based on water. And then um, next to that is based on air. Uh, and like the pavement even looks like it's carved into clouds or something in front of the, one of the quick services there. Yep. And, and then there's a uh, fire over by our, uh, <laughs> our not <laughs> Charmander's fire grill, but a barbecue <laughs> restaurant based on yep. fire. So we're, we're halfway there. Uh, but that's like a fire area and all, all the supporting structures and landscaping and stuff. It's going to make it look like, you know, it's a fire theme that way. If you're in the hub, it doesn't all look the same and you're not like going to get lost. 
because it is kind of confusing looking. At least if it all looked the same, you would not know which of the three snowman rings you were in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at least this way, it's like, okay, we're in the fire area. We need to get over to the space area, um, which is where the roller coaster is and the burger joint. And, uh, and then the back, of course, is Chinese, which is the sixth element. <laughs> <laughs> You heard of that China? Oh. You are the sixth element. I think it's a it's it's a Chinese restaurant. At least the, that's the what I think. The fifth element is love still. Is that is that still cold? It's one, two, three, four. No, the fifth element is Chinese. <laughs> no, and it's the fourth love. element I saw that movie. is outer space is the fourth element. <laughs> well, I do love Chinese food, so I think that still works as the fifth so, element. Water, fire, air, space, and Chinese. I think that those are the themes. There might be another one we're missing. Um maybe uh, something in the middle um, where the the unknown Thunderdome uh, stained glass <laughs> structure. I, it's been rumored to be like a carousel, maybe like a, a Zodiac themed carousel. So maybe instead of like, because outer space is right next door to it. Instead of outer space, it's like um, make-believe space. <laughs> Zodiac. <laughs> Astrology kinda... right next door to astronomy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I got it. It could be. I mean, it's kind of interesting that like it's got that littler building that could be like the queue to get to it. Right yeah, and some of the site plans, it does it. look like that's it does look like that's a cue, because some people thought it might be a show inside, um, but because of the slant of the walls, there's not much usable space in the middle, uh, like enough for like audience to sit in in stands. So mm -hmm. if it's a show, it'd be a pretty small show. I think a carousel is a safe bet, or some kind of ride that's small. And you know, there's like two rides in the hub. One of them is this intense roller coaster, and one is a small thing maybe once for families and once more the thrill ride kind of even it out same thing no big deal kids can go on the roller coaster they'll be fine i mean if they're tall enough <laughs> ice cream and sandwiches free, in the shoes is that what we do and free of heart conditions or recent <laughs> surgeries neck and back um so uh about the coaster mm -hmm. uh, uh being in the outer space area and having two tracks next to each other i've been calling it a space themed racing coaster yeah uh, not like a dueling coaster where they're coming at each other all the time, but more like a side by side racing coaster. I think it looks like that. I mean, in the concept art, it definitely looks like it's a racing coaster. Um, it is not a part of how to train your dragon land. No. Please pass it on. Every time someone says that, just correct them for me, please. There's already a roller coaster in that area. This is ha has its entrance facing the hub, not facing dragons. You're driving me crazy, people. And there's a lot that drive me crazy about things like Lord of the Rings. Well, this is a Lord of the Rings related roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Lord um, of the Rings in space on a racing coaster. Yeah, no. Do you have Flying you heard barrels. any rumor? Have, have you heard any rumors about the manufacturer for this coaster? I have not. Uh, I don't remember. Um, I've heard uh, Premier rides thrown around really? a bit. Some have said, well, because like um, West Coast Racers, I think that's premier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I see why people would jump to that. And I've seen Intamin, which I don't think, I think the Dragon Coaster is Intamin. That looks like the same kind of yeah. uh, uh, Hagrid ride type coaster to me. And I don't think it's going to be B&M. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I'm, I, I wasn't going to say I'm putting my money on it. I'm putting the Lord of the Rings money jar on <laughs> Mac. Not my money, your money. Uh, folks, for every time you say that, it's it's yeah. So I, I would bet my guess is Mac. Um, they're already Mac doing. List. Yeah, I think they're already going to probably be doing the boat ride at How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, yeah, that um, would make sense. And some people have guessed that they were doing the coaster in Dragon since they're already doing the boat ride. But I think it's flipped and like Inaman was doing the Dragon one and maybe Mac is doing this one. Uh, they had said something. There's a quote um, in a YouTube video where the the company one of the representatives said they were doing like their biggest coaster ever at a universal park and it's like what <laughs> oh. uh, unless 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 it's beijing but i don't think they don't really have a like a new big coaster um they have a small you know um jurassic world coaster and they have the transformers hulk clone but so and that's That'd a be really cool It'd be really so, cool I'm yeah excited. so now i want it to be mac yeah, that's that's my rumor. I'm throwing that out into the to the ether. I have oh. no evidence or proof of it other than uh, Mac made a mention that they were building a large one at Universal somewhere. And, you know, there's like, like five Universal parks, so it could be any of them. But I think this one makes the most sense. 
I like that. I hope it is now. I mean, it could be the Jurassic Coast. No, it's Intamin. And Jurassic Coaster is Intamin. Mm-hmm. We know that. It's got to be Intamin. So this is this the there. Yeah. Or it's Premier really Rides cool. and I'm just wrong. I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. Anything else in the hub? I don't think so. Unless we're going to talk about the hotel later. Well, OK, well, let's talk about restaurants. OK, restaurants. <laughs> I, yeah, I saw someone tweet out when I t- posted this image. They tweeted out, yo, dog, I heard you like restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's a good use of the old meme. Yes, it does have or does appear to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight restaurants in the center, not including all the small windows and booths. Um, one of them is like ice cream shop. So let's not even count that. So like seven restaurants. Um, oh, yeah, but two like, lot. yeah, that's a lot. But it's, what? How many are at City Walk right now? Do we know off the top of your head? Okay. Well, th- exactly. That's the point is that if there's no City Walk here and this is kind of their City Walk, then that makes total sense. But also there's less restaurants, I think, in the lands than the other parks have. So it kind of evens out. Yeah, that makes sense. I think since everyone has to pass through the middle to go from one land to another because there's only one entry point. This is kind of mm. like, you know, they're doubling up on the middle having restaurants because there's no in-betweens. You know, there's no there's no uh, Cosmic Rays uh, uh, <laughs> restaurant. There's no, you know, you can't pass right by Columbia Harbor House on your way between Liberty Square and Fan- Fantasyland. Like, you have to pass through the hub. So that's where they put most of the restaurants. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, like we were just saying, it's, it's basically their city walk in the end anyway. Well, potentially. Right. And we've we've theorized about it before. The whole open hub idea um, put forth, I think, last year, maybe almost yeah, yeah. a year, like a year ago. Um, supposedly that idea is, is squashed and they're not going to do it. And the idea was that anyone would be allowed into the hub and then you need um, through facial recognition, you need to have a, a day pass to get into the actual lands and go on rides, mm-hmm. um, which they could do. We don't know. You know, I just because we're talking about site plans and layouts and what the rides are, and we have a pretty good idea of that. Doesn't mean we ha- we know how like the park's going to operate. Yeah. Did you follow? That wasn't me. No, that wasn't okay. me. <laughs> nope, that wasn't me. But the dogs dogs are waking up. May we have theorized that maybe the lands close earlier than the center, mm-hmm. um, or even the restaurants in the lands close early, and then you have to eat out in the in the middle to try to force people to kind of use the middle area. Um, like I like Thunder Falls Terrace at Islands of Adventure closes yeah, at 4 yeah. p.m. Like That's even ridiculous. if even if Islands is open till nine, that restaurant closes at four and it kind of forces you to Mythos or Confisco or to City Walk. Oh, shucks. Um, Mythos? Darn. So because <laughs> it's the only restaurants open past a certain time. And it's like, yeah, yeah. So and this is this. Uh, a lot of them are full service, too. There's like one, two, three, four. Four yeah. full services, at least in the in the in the park that we know of, maybe five if you count the one in Dragons. Um, so yeah, forcing everyone out to to eat at these fancy restaurants. I, I see where they're going with it, but also, what if the hub is open after like six p.m. or something, um, like free parking at City Walk after six to get yeah. people to entice people to come in, have dinner, maybe watch the fireworks, and then leave, not being able to go on any rides. Yeah, I think that's a cool. Well, they would they be able to go? They'd be able to go on the the hub rides, wouldn't they? they I, I don't know. You completely. put a ticket booth up, and 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 you you say you know a la carte fifteen dollars to ride the Lord of the Rings space coaster. <laughs> <laughs> dollar, dollar. Um, and um, and the because there was rumors that they were working with the county to make some kind of people mover to connect the Orange County Convention Center to the park directly so that people yeah. like get done with their business meetings or their convention meetings and all at like and at like six or five and they're hungry and you don't have a way to transport instead of walking down I drive just hop onto this conveyance system and it drops you off right at the front of this park walk in for free and eat something at you know the the water based octagon restaurant <laughs> <laughs> more um, skyliners yeah, well, there's that patent for the autonomous uh, people mover system. And, you know, maybe that was what they were working on. But that idea was like canceled, universal canceled that, not the county. I think the county liked that idea. Um, yeah. And that's what kind of killed the open hub rumor. But maybe they still kind of want to have it both ways where they open after a certain time and they let anyone in. They'll definitely let the hotel guests in. That's my theory is that, that hotel guests. Sense. Even if you don't have a park pass, I feel like they get free hub access after X o'clock. That way they can, you know, get a good seat for the fireworks or go have a, a meal at one of these fancy restaurants. 
So that's that's a theory. Um, one one thing that does support the idea that the lands might close earlier than the hub, mm-hmm. or that people will be in the hub that don't have access to the land, is that there is at least one gift shop outside of the lands. The Nintendo Land has uh, is rumored to have a gift shop right outside the land, facing the hub. It kind of um, looks looks like a castle, maybe. I think yeah, it'll be themed to match the Peach's Castle because it'll also be an exit for the land, kind of mm-hmm. like exit through the gift shop. But the land will already have a gift shop in it, so this is like a bonus gift shop. And the way that it's facing and has an entrance straight from the hub leads to me to believe, you know, that maybe the land might be closed off to some people, and they had to have a store, and that maybe other lands would have stores because uh, there's other structures we don't know what they are in front of each of the lands, or at least two of the lands. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's that leads some some credibility to the rumor that the the hub might be open later or open to those that aren't able to go into the lands themselves, so they could still buy Nintendo stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's going to look cool too if it's themed to the castle. That'd be awesome. Um, and there is a quick service like right next door to it, but I don't think it would be Nintendo related. Someone asked me that. I don't think it's a Nintendo quick service. I think it's just a hub quick service that happens to be connected to. Um, I think going by site plans, there's like bathrooms in between the Nintendo store and the quick service. So the mm-hmm. building looks larger, but it's not entirely, you know, it's actually a quite small store. It's going to be cool. So what else? Charmander's Big Fire Grill. Uh, isn't there like a uh, there's a market, right? Probably a quick service thing Is it like well, Zephyr a- Mar- in the air thing. Food court area. It's like yeah, yeah. that's kind of a catch all, and that's in front of the dragons area. So like dragons area is already kind of the kids area, and then putting the food court type um, restaurant right outside it makes sense. But it's also near the entrance exit. So like on your way out, you're like, let's just grab something quick to eat, and it has multiple types of food, so it kind of caters to everyone. Um, yeah. But also speaking of that, like I don't have it labeled, but there's like almost a main street type area at the park entrance and exit that kind of forks and you can go left or right and it's covered yep. like covered shopping areas. Um, so like the main gift shops and then any specialty gift shops uh, are like undercover, which uh, it's about time we have a main street undercover <laughs> in Florida. Uh, yeah. Lots of other countries and theme parks have them around the world. I don't know why we haven't done it here yet. <laughs> I don't know why either, but it looks nice too. I mean, it sounds like it's going to, I think it's going to look nice. It's got probably what glass, glass on the ceiling, at least for part of it or something like that. Yeah, I think so. Well, who, who does that also? Well, the new Universal Beijing has something similar for their entryway, yeah. the is Hollywood it, Road. Is, it's one of the Asian parks at Walt Disney World, right? Is it Shanghai? Um, Which one has I think the, Tokyo Disneyland. And they do it partially at Diagon Alley, don't they? Isn't part of the alley covered carpet market right yeah it's yeah, the, that's, that's right. very exactly just like that um and if you go by the concept art they'll be like big beams of light coming right out the top <laughs> so good <laughs> <laughs> also from the uh, uh site plan that we can't show uh <laughs> there we got a really good look at the hotel area yeah um which you know we'll get individual site plans for these areas later probably like the hub and the hotel uh, so I'm not too bummed about it. We'll eventually see it. It was like a sneak preview that we saw for a day and a half. Um, <laughs> so the main the main hotel at the back is one of only three hotels that have p- been permitted so far with project numbers. Mm-hmm. There's also two that are going right across the street from the park. And they will be like right below the park entrance. There'll be two hotels. And one's a little bit larger than the other one going by the uh, parcel of land. Uh, it's possible there could be, well, originally I thought maybe just a uh, like a walkway over the street that you could walk from the hotel to the park. Yeah. But if you were going to use that patented conveyance system, maybe this would be a good place for a people mover type thingy. Maybe. Like, you know, you'd stay at this hotel at the back of the park, you can walk right into the park or stay at these two across the street and you can take our um, not Skyliner system, <laughs> <laughs> whatever they would call it. I don't know if they'd go with not Skyliner, but, uh, you know, you get the idea. <laughs> not Skyliner. Yeah, probably just Perfect. elevated walkway, to be honest. Like, I don't it's too close to need like a shuttle bus. It's like just across this 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 street, the Universal Way Street. Yeah. So please be Nintendo. Please be Nintendo themed hotel. Please be Nintendo themed hotel. Because <laughs> um, it would be like right below Nintendo. That'd be a perfect place for a Nintendo hotel. I mean, a perfect place for a Nintendo hotel would be attached to Nintendo, but you take what you can get. That's what they're going to do monsters though, right? They're going to do an attached monsters hotel just for me. 
Well, they got the the hotel at the back is attached to monsters already. So maybe the, I'm telling you, the West Wing could be the monster wing. (laughs) That would be too good. They would never do that for me. The main hotel at the back of the park is going to have about 500 rooms. Uh, What we saw in the site plan uh, was like a a big pool area with a slide because all the pools at Universal have slides and Mm -hmm. little cabanas around them. We saw what might be a parking garage that you pointed out. Yes. Um, Uh, and then it's a, it has the the one restaurant that is part of the hub, but also attached to the hotel. So I'm guessing that hotel guests could eat there without having a, access to the park. And then park guests could eat there without going into the hotel. Oh, so. how sweet of them. Yeah. What else? Oh, there's a big retention pond behind the hotel. Yeah, yeah. Which has been in all of the site plans that we've seen. Uh, and in the newest one, you could see there was like a little road and a little island leading to the center of the retention pond. And that's where it's rumored that the fireworks will be set off. That would be a shame. So the fireworks. In the hotel. No, that's the best part about staying in a hotel. I mean, if you're I know, staying in a hotel. Sarcastic. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were like noise pollution. I don't want to hear fireworks nah. on my vacation to a magical place. Um, yeah. So <laughs> if you had a view of not the park because like one side's going to be five hundred dollars more to see the park and one side's yeah. going to be a big retention retention of pond of course but at least you get to see the fireworks like take off if you're having to look at the retention pond like that's kind of cool i wonder if there's going to be anything on the roof like disney's got the rooftop hotel at the new riviera spot yeah that would spot be a, roof. that would be a good idea especially if like a, a, they could have a dessert party for park guests yeah. <laughs> you can't I mean, get it, to it during fireworks without paying it doesn't look like it. I mean, it looks like there's a couple spots that could be like a partially covered area on a roof in the concept art, at least. Yeah, there's a dome uh, on well, the left there and there's little towers. Though also to the right, there's like something that looks kind of like the top of an old Pizza Hut sort of restaurant. Oh, that is like, like, it looks a, like roof. a little roof. Maybe it's a little bar. I don't know. How did I miss that? I don't know. I missed it, too. I just saw it because I was curious now. It looks like uh, a little outdoor space, maybe, though. It could possibly be. Yeah. Do you see that person leaning to the left, standing up there, who's really tall also? (laughs) He's like, "Ah, I'm going to fall. I think it's Aladdin. Aladdin is up there. He's 20 feet tall and he's going to fall down. Oh, Um, man. I hope I never noticed that. Yeah, though, that definitely looks like it could be some kind of outdoor bar uh, with like really great views of the park on one side and then views Mm -hmm. of the fireworks on the other side. Definitely. I could see that. That'd be cool. Hmm. Um, Yeah. So let's talk about the actual lands themselves. And we won't go too much into detail because we've got tons of videos on the YouTube channel and we've talked about it before. And we were, I want to say, mostly right in our original podcast. (laughs) I don't don't want to go listen to it. So I'm just going to pretend that we were mostly right. (laughs) Sure, mostly right. We're good. Close enough. Uh, Super Nintendo World. Mm, Mario Kart ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toad's Cafe Quick Service, Yoshi Family yep. Ride, Donkey Kong Coaster. Not much to Yoshi. say that we haven't. We, not much to say that we haven't already said. But I did want to say that the Donkey Kong Coaster. Uh, a lot of people are like thinking it's going to be roller coastery uh, and and like a thrill ride. But I think it would definitely be the least thrilling of the three roller coasters in this park. And like I would think of it more as a almost like a a dark ride on a coaster track than. A roller coaster because it's not going to go that fast. I'm still into it. I mean, look how much space. Look in the concept art or the yeah. site plan. You can't you can't look at and like how much <laughs> how little space <laughs> that there actually is uh, uh, for it to be. It, like the speed is going to be more dark ride speed with a couple yeah, thrills. Like the jumping the track will be neat because it'll be a little launch, like a little wee, but not like a <laughs> whoa. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. it's not the Hagrid ride here. This well, there's the, definitely it's big enough, too, that they're going to probably it makes sense anyway, because it's big enough too. they're going to be doing multiple. I think multiple levels could happen in there easily. Oh, yeah. No, there's some overlapping. And um, like there's there's a couple outdoor scenes uh, that are just like a big loop. And then you come back like it's not really like that might be the fastest part is the out- outdoor stuff. Um, mm. But then inside, it's like a lot of like bunny hills and uh, turns and like fire effects, water effects and animatronics and show scenes. And to see a show scene on a roller coaster, you can't be going too fast. So. Nope, not at all. It's great. I think it'll be fun, though. I'm excited for it. I want oh, to see the ride. 
I want to see the ride system. I'm really interested in that. Uh, if you're watching the YouTube video, here is the ride system. I'm showing you a test, uh, uh, and and you can see right here. Look, here's the launch. Wee! Isn't that cool? Okay. <laughs> uh, all all the more reason to watch the video version. And the next line is the, the next line is the only land that really matters, right? It's monsters. monsters. Universal monsters. Yes. yes. I stopped calling it Universal Classic Monsters because I realized that the trademark is on Universal Monsters, and they probably don't want me to keep saying classic. Yeah, probably. So the Universal Monsters land, that is entirely Frankenstein. So maybe they'll call it Frankenstein Village. Who knows? Perfect. I'm in for it. We've got a dark ride quick service. That's pretty too. And a show that we don't know what the heck it is yet. Yeah, I think it's in the round um, from one of the documents. It looked like it was like the theater in the round, not like it is in the concept art, but like a enclosed. It could be that puzzle theater concept. That's an yeah. idea I've been I've been wondering about that was in which, the pitch plans for Zelda for Nintendo, but then got canceled, which would be kind of cool, to be honest. Be I mean, funny. it's like the, the a patent has essentially sections of the audience moving up and going over other sections of the audience. So I don't cool. know. If, I don't know what for what purpose, but I can imagine like a, a character and like like imagine Dracula in the center. And he's like, D- don't underestimate my, my power. And then he'd like he'd, is that Darth Vader? Yeah. He Darth Vader's you and like picks up the whole <laughs> section of the audience and moves it over another section. And then he's like, I don't know why I did that. I just want to show you. It's pretty cool. And okay, then he walks kid, off so stage. You heard that first. Dracula can use the force, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> That's just one of the things Dracula can do. So of course. Totally makes sense. Frankenstein Village, one of the things we kind of got right and kind of got wrong. Okay, I'll take the blame for getting Dracula's castle wrong. You can take the the credit for getting the windmill right. Yes. How about that? Because <laughs> you guessed the windmill day one, August 1st, and you were totally right. <laughs> yeah, just because I wanted to be, it. Yeah, well, you, you wanted it into existence. And then I Perfect. was holding firm that that was Dracula's castle, but it is probably definitely Frankenstein's manor. I'm not going to say castle because I'll get in trouble for it um, from, from all all the uh, Frankenstein uh, gatekeepers. But uh, I do think the Watchtower Laboratory will also be part of the facade for this attraction. Which so, is rad. Which I expect to always be being struck by lightning because that's all I've only I've only ever seen the Watchtower being struck by lightning in like clips. So I imagine it's just constantly it's just constantly dark and dreary with a storm cloud over the top well, of this. The only other thing that matters is there's beer and pretzels. <laughs> well, there's probably a quick service in the windmill. We thought it was a meet and greet, but looking at some of the plans, it looks like it has a small kitchen. So some kind of quick service that maybe serves Bavarian pretzels and, and beer. beer. Pretzels and beer. Pretzels and <laughs> beer. Makes, it makes sense. <laughs> Perfectly. Some kind of Frankenstein shaped uh, pretzel. I mean, there is uh, like a quick service or a large restaurant in there, in that land as well. <sighs> Pretzels and beer at one little stop would be perfect to walk around there with. Hmm. I think that the rumor that the the main ride is uh, some kind of Kuka Arm ride, like uh, Forbidden Journey, is, still seems to be the leading rumor. Although I I have reason to believe that there is not going to be screen carousels like Forbidden Journey, and maybe it'll all be physical. That'd be good. It'd be really cool, actually, to see just a different version of that where it's all physical. Me into it. Yeah, I, I think that you need something to differentiate it. If it had scene, screen, scene, screen, it would be way too similar to the other ride. Just a little bit. And what do we got left now? That's that's pretty much monsters, right? Yeah, there's a big open area in the middle that I hope is like a big never ending scare zone. But I don't know. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> uh, that would be fun. I kind of like that idea still. <laughs> Let's skip back down to How to Train Your Dragon. We'll save the other one for last. All right. How to Train Your Dragon with all the fun stuff that we were hoping for not in it. Uh, Yeah, because we... Okay. Obviously, from the concept art, we figured out there's a roller coaster. Yep. It's a little bit. Um, the boat ride. The Skyfly ride, uh, which there's two of. Like, I think we got all that right. Mm-hmm. And then there was a couple of big buildings. Oh, and a play area. Yep. We got a couple of big buildings and... I think both of our guesses. Oh, we also thought there might be a flume ride, but they just colored part of the queue and it looked like a flume ride yep. because they're they're trying to trick us with this concept art. <laughs> yep. We were trying our best to try and see, though. It it, it kind of looks like it in the art, but. Mm, it's yeah. crazy. If you zoom in on the concept art, there's like this um, magenta looking circle thing here. Yeah. And the blue thing. Those are queue lines and pathways. 
and they colored weird. in the Q line as purple to make it look all fancy, but really it's just a bunch of switchbacks in a circle formation, almost like a maze. So yeah, they're trying to trick us. Um, the, the site plan reveals that the left building is a large stage show of some sort. Mm-hmm. And the middle building, which I had hoped was some kind of simulator ride, flying theater type thing, is just a big giant restaurant. Wah, wah. Now, I had already suspected that it was going to be themed to the Great Hall on the exterior because it looks like um, like we're looking at the back end here in the concept art. But if we could see the front, the the way it looks like a cliff face really looks like the the Great Hall meeting area yep. from the how to train a dragon films like you put some giant viking statues in front of it you're, you're good to go yep. so i think that'll look really cool i'm guessing it's a full service because it's a, a big dining hall inside that circle area and it's really tall at least from concept art so maybe there'll be like animatronics or flying dragons or projections or something above you while you dine i imagine like long viking tables and something i i if it's gonna be full service it's gotta be fancy it's gotta be like a it's, it's got to be like almost like a show. I'm hoping some kind of thing, or maybe it's like a dragon meet and greet, <laughs> right? Giant dragon character dining, and like a giant dragon comes to your table. <laughs> oh it's man! Like, hey, hi. Oh, um, if it's Viking theme though, they better have mead in there. So I'm saying, can't have a great hall without mead. I want to be, like medieval times, everything's just like you'd get your own hen and just tear it apart with your hands. <laughs> It has a huge kitchen area. I mean, some of it's probably bathrooms, but looking at the yeah, site plan, it's big. That's a big kitchen. So something there. I mean, it might share some kitchen with because uh, there's an outdoor food service, a uh, quick service that doesn't have too big a kitchen. So I wonder if they share some of the like walk ins and stuff. It might, but it's still a pretty big building. Yes, it is. So and very tall. So flying dragons. Yay, dragons. I think that's it. The like for the most part, we we know what the rest of How to Train Your Dragon is. The you know the Skyfly ride is like uh, flying training, and the boat ride is like probably going to be target practice training where you score targets in other boats. And yep. uh, the roller coaster might be um, like the closest thing we have to flying with a dragon or in a dragon. I'm into it. The roller coaster with the dragon cars would be cool. Yes, it's a very outdoor land. So let's jump to the last land, which is a, a lot of indoor space. Yeah. So Fantastic Beasts. And where did they go? Fantastic Beasts and where did the land go? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I did a video because even though we didn't have a site plan, I'm like, there's not going to be much to look at anyway. I'll do a video. And I uh, talked about the streets being based on place ca- Place Cachet. Excuse me. Go speak French here. Place Cachet. Uh, which is like the French uh, diagonally uh, from the second Fantastic Beast movie. And uh, there's like a quick service there and a bunch of little shops, a lawn shop and clothing stores, blah, 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 blah. There's like definitely a theater in between the two main rides. There's some kind of dark ride on the left and then some kind of ride on the right. And I had said, like, I think the one on the right might be based on the French Ministry of Magic, uh, Magique. And looking at the site plan that I can't show it definitely <laughs> had I mean absolutely had a little street that dead ends into the French ministry from the film like it had the little yep. like circle square thing yep. it matched exactly so there's no doubt no question in my mind that that attraction is the French ministry and that the other one is some kind of dark ride um, and the other one without the fireworks in the concept art to like to actually see the size comparison, that other building is quite big. It is. It's very big. Um, I like, I think it was the biggest ride in the park as far as indoor attraction. Yeah. It's huge. It's probably one of the biggest buildings in the park, even counting the hotel. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. It's huge. So the one on the right is a little taller. Um, so we've, we've, contemplated the idea of it being some kind of tower type attraction not like super tall maybe like four stories or so Mm. um or four different levels of of like a like a dark ride that has different like multi-dimensional go up and down instead of going forward so cool didn't uh not not like a drop ride i don't think it was that there was a tower pattern we had right something like that that you think well there's two tower patents yep there's two tower patents and the first one was like some kind of interactive one and they had the pig floating in the center (laughs) and you use zapper guns to like shoot the pig and earn score or whatever and you can see the score above the other team 
Um, so weird. This one, though, the second one was more interesting to me because you go up and then you can go into a space or into a room and then come back out and go down and go up and go to different things. And you could see other people or you could not, depending on how they organize the up and down parts. So Whereas cool. the other one was just a, a traditional tower ride that had interactive elements. This one's more like a dark ride that has tower elements. Yeah, it looks fun. The, so. Those patterns are interesting. I'm curious. Um, I would like to go on that ride. So, and then the interactive, uh, or the dark ride is rumored to be interactive. Like, uh, the concept was that, um, all of Newt's creatures have escaped and we got to go through the streets and kind of round them up. Oh, darn. Which, you know, <laughs> with maybe some kind of interactive wand attached to the ride vehicle or whatever. Do I get, that's, that's the rumor. Do I get to keep the nifflers I catch? That's the question. Uh, no, but they'll be available for purchase oh, in the gift shop boo. on the way out. It's not the same. I really, I can't believe they sold out of the little black and white ones and then never restocked them. It's horrible. For shame. The little, the little gremlin looking ones. For shame. All right. Okay. So. All right. So hmm. let's address the rumor. No, no. Let's talk about where Kowalski's Bakery is going first. Okay, fine. The rumor. <laughs> If I put Kowalski's Bakery in this land, I would put it just outside the portal, which is like the Arc de Triumph. Um, I'd put it outside in the hub. Like there's a Nintendo store facing the hub. Why couldn't there be a Kowalski's Bakery facing the hub? That way it doesn't matter that it's not in New York because it's not in the land. Mm, there's a couple of buildings yeah. out there. Yeah, there is a couple of buildings out there. I mean, one one in the concept art really looks like a U.S. Congress building. I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, it totally it does. could just be the way they colored it. I don't know. Totally but does. There's another in the site plan. There was two buildings. There's one on the left and one on the right of the entrance. So that one of them could be, you know, Kowalski's Bakery. One could be a large Niffler gift shop. <laughs> um, so All right. yeah, I definitely. If you have 1920s France. Uh, uh, as the land and you want to keep land, you know, theme integrity, you put Kowalski's bakery outside. And then if the land is closed and you, you still can buy your weird wizarding shaped baked goods. So yeah, the, the, the yeah, rumor, of course. of course the rumor, um, we had heard that this was still fantastic beasts. I think as of, uh, late February, early March, that was when the yep. last time I heard any rumors about this, which is not that long ago. So when nope. people tell me that they've changed their mind and they're not doing Fantastic uh, Beasts anymore, my thought is, but they, I just got confirmation, you know, a couple months ago that they were working on it. Well, the rumor is that as of March, and which is very recently, they have had second thoughts about the Fantastic Beasts franchise and Universal Creative is looking into doing something else based on the Wizarding World. This is just a rumor. I'm reporting what the rumor is. The rumor is that it might include the British Ministry of Magic and more London stuff and not be part of Fantastic Beasts, but maybe incorporate lots of creatures from the new series into the old settings, that if that makes sense. seems weird. Uh, like there was rumors that they were working on or they wished or they wanted to do a Ministry of Magic attraction next to Diagon Alley where Fear Factor Live is. This would be an opportunity for them to do that. I think, I mean, I can imagine Universal Creative being more excited for the original Potter stuff than the movies that keep um, getting less and less critical acclaim and money. Yeah. So I don't blame them if this is a real true rumor but there still is two attractions here that are planned. If they do have a year more, if they're delaying construction and they technically, like if they can't be building right now and they have an opportunity to redesign, like this would buy them some time. It would. That they might not have had otherwise. So um, the only thing I see with these kind of rumors, and even though it could still it could still happen, but I, from what I gather from the, the things I've heard, most of the design and manufacturing stuff is pretty much paid for. So it seems kind of sure. I mean, they could, they got a year now extra, so it could still happen, but it just seems interesting that they would talk about doing this when it's so blatantly France in these plans that yeah. nobody can see. Right, right. In the plan. Yes, it's, it's definitely, it definitely is 1920s Paris. Um, and Hey, you know, maybe they're, thinking of changing it to a different Fantastic Beast setting because the second movie didn't do really, really very well. I don't know. But there is precedent for lands changing at the last minute yep. as long as you keep all of the structures the same because you've already designed yep. it. Um, and we were going to talk about Universal Beijing this week, but we switched it to this because of all the new news. 
uh, and we'll probably do an episode on Universal Studios Beijing maybe next month because there is a lot of t- stuff to talk about mm-hmm. and it's still on target for 2021. But one of the most interesting things that I wanted to talk about was that the Kung Fu Panda Land wasn't originally in the plans. Yep. It wasn't until they acquired DreamWorks that they decided to change one of the ideas. And it was so late in the game, they couldn't change the ride systems, the location of dining, the fact that it's in an indoor land. They couldn't change any of that. They just kind of changed the theming and the story, but using the existing ride systems. So if they are going to change Fantastic Beasts, it's so late in the game, I wouldn't be surprised to see the streets in the same configuration uh, for the most part and the rides to definitely be the same ride systems in the same configuration but you have to you know change the way it looks on the outside yep you know you fabricate a new facade than you were planning on you put new animatronics in story and you could do a lot you know with a like look at uh <laughs> superstar limo got turned into oh. mike uh yeah. <laughs> mike and sully to the yeah. rescue monster zinc and that's a good change it is it's a completely different attraction using exactly the same not only the same ride system and layout but like some of the same animatronics yeah so uh, this they hadn't even built this one yet, so it'll be a lot easier to retheme. But I wouldn't expect it to be like a completely new build, so much as just a retrofit into what they already had planned. I, one of the rumors for the second attraction, the um, rounding up Newt's creatures attraction, is instead maybe a flying Ford Anglia attraction. Well, That's I'm, one of the rumors I've heard. Kind of interesting. Uh, so instead of you know traveling around. Uh, the city finding, you know, Nifflers. Now we're flying around the city. I don't know. Different city. Yep. <laughs> and maybe it's a London based uh, attraction. And then people who hear this rumor, like myself, go, but didn't we already get a London? And I guess, you know, Diagon Alley does have a London facade out front. Yeah. A little um, bit. Yeah. Because like Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley are very different in different places. So it's weird to me to have a third land based on something that's close to the second land. Yeah. Uh, to which everyone's going to be like, yeah, but King's Cross Station is nowhere near the Ministry of Magic. And I'm like, it's still London. London. It's not like Tokyo and London. Yeah. Like, we're still in the, still in London. It's still pretty close in theme park lands um, for it to be two miles down the road. So I don't know. I it, that's That's the rumors. I thought it was worth mentioning. I know people have issues with the films, but I still I still argue that the settings are awesome and I still want to go through them. So I'm still kind of pulling for Paris. Yeah, it would be a shame. I think the design for Paris was going to be really interesting, but they have extra time now and there's uncertainty. I can kind of understand where this may be. It could be just speculation on on the part of people who want it not to be Fantastic Beasts. There's always be. that. It could be. And like I said, I. I, it's just what I want. I think the settings in the movies are great. The plot is kind of seems like it's super stretched. Like she's trying to make like three movies into six or something kind of is what it feels like. Um, but I'm fine with it. I mean, I like I love the settings. I like that little circus and kind of carnival thing in the second one. And that area is cool. Uh, the ministry is really cool looking in that in those movies. So, yeah, um, yeah. The, like art almost uh art nouveau yeah yeah yeah. the like black and white glass design is very pretty but you know at the same time they could make the 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 big statue and the fireplaces from the ministry of magic and somehow form fit it into this mold uh that would be an iconic location but is three potter lands see at least with fantastic beasts it wasn't directly tied to the wizarding world of harry potter so i feel like it would be weird to have a third harry potter land we've already got so much at the resort yeah, I think it'd be kind of weird anyway to have London, the waterfront, and then London, what, miles away again? Yeah, but they, they never really call it London. I guess it's just the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley. So this could be an opportunity to say, like, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, M- Mom, <laughs> Ministry of Magic. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, 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 I could see it, it's fine, but the complaints about too much Potter in these parks was at least quelled a little bit by Fantastic Beasts being a separate series. Now they got no excuse yep. if they go with this. You know, that's yep. that's going to upset the non-Potter fans probably more than Fantastic Beasts would upset regular Potter fans. Yeah, just don't say Lord of the Rings, you're going to put a dollar in Patreon. You hear me? Everyone listening, what would you replace Fantastic Beasts with that isn't Harry Potter? And or Lord keeping of the with the idea, keeping <laughs> the idea of this structure with a street leading to a giant building with two massive rides in it and a show in the middle, what would you put there? Um, 
it's going to be interesting uh, because now we're still, you know, three and a half years or whatever out from when this park is done. So look at this map and all of these labels and let's see what changes. You know, uh, the concept art and the site plans all lined up. So we're at a, a very interesting junction point here where the construction hasn't actually started on the structures or the foundations. And all of the plans had been written up to this point, but now they have a little bit of time to kind of rethink. So do we lose some attractions, um, you know, to save money or to save time? Do we like get a completely rethemed land or does everything stay exactly the same? Don't know. No, I don't know either. Maybe they'll, there's also the possibility they'll up some stuff a little bit and do some more plussing in some places too. Yeah. I would maybe the ride system for Creature for the Black Lagoon Phase 2 Universal Monsters ride will be ready and they'll just start work on that and have it ready within a couple months of the park opening. Wouldn't don't that be tease. great? Don't tease. Wouldn't that be great? Like the opposite of what everyone's thinking. Like, oh, there's going to be so many cuts and, and the, the park's going to be delayed or canceled. And like the opposite happens. It opens with more stuff than they were originally planning. That would be crazy. It's not going to happen. But man, wouldn't it be nice? It'd be so cool. It's a better thought than everybody being down on everything right now. And, you know, I don't think it's going to be canceled because Comcast, and this is the strangest thing coming out of my mouth, but Comcast is the greatest thing to happen to the Universal Parks since MCA owned it because they're actually not afraid to put money into it. They have assets and they're still, you know, they're a cable company. They're getting money. Walt Disney World, uh, parent company Disney, is an entertainment company and they're not getting that much money right now. And they also have, you know, $70 billion of debt because they just bought Fox. Uh, yep. So Comcast is able to keep doing construction and they're not going to be canceling things because they don't have to. Thankfully. Thankfully, but also they really like the theme parks. It's like their new toy and they don't want to just like throw it away because they have to put more money into it. They're, they're not afraid to put money into it. And yeah, when, and go ahead. Well, when this all blows over and the tourism industry and uh, the economy recovers, they'll be, in a, they'll be very well positioned in Orlando to have a new theme park to open. Uh, whereas Disney is canceling or, or rescheduling or putting off a lot of projects. So yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, yeah or you know we could have had super nintendo world next year if it had taken over kid zone like they originally planned <laughs> oh, but hey whatever <laughs> universal always builds through things like this and it always pays off for them so yeah i i want a whole new theme park i i think like we didn't really go into it here and we'll talk more about it later but the the hub area alone is going to be some of the most beautiful parts of a theme park in orlando if they mm. stick to the plans like that's some good good looking stuff yeah it's cool stuff in there for sure i mean like we're talking tokyo disney sea quality level theming if they were to do it the way they're planning on doing it which only makes me more excited for the lands because i think it's going to be we already have what diagon alley to look at i think it's going to be even way better than that i really expect it to blow my mind we'll see and, and yoshi and yoshi and monsters, I hear monsters, the monsters land at night is where to be. So I will be there, hopefully with a pretzel and a beer. <laughs> Projection mapped fog over all the buildings. Oh, so good. Always a foggy night in monsters. This this could be, you know, and, and hopefully the stuff is open late so we can see it all at night. Because the concept art is at night. Don't tease us. Exactly. <laughs> I like going to the theme parks at night any, anyway. The lighting and everything is really cool to see. Yeah. Lord of the Rings space themed racing dollar, coaster. Dollar. Dollar. <laughs> um, before we go, consider joining our Patreon for just as low as a dollar a month. Uh, you can get exclusive podcasts that are only available on there. We just talked about the Revenge of the Mummy. I also post about early rumors and we have trivia coming up for real prizes. We've already done one and we're doing another one. We got a Tiki Room backpack up for grabs in, if you're good at theme park trivia. And that's for Patreons only. Patreon.com slash theme park stop. Yay. For a dollar. Like, One dollar. Like my what? commercial. Yeah. One dollar. Don't, don't put that dollar in the Lord of the Rings jar. Join no. Patreon <laughs> for exclusive content. Yep. All right. We need like a like a sign off. We need like something to say at the end of podcast so I don't just stutter. Like, 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 don't forget to tip your server. Like, I don't know what to say at the end. That's a good one. Don't forget to tip your server. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and don't just go back to the pool. <laughs> <sighs> not naming names but it's those guys <laughs> <laughs> oh no